Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the fourth video from the uh, Payload CMS Vue.js uh, video series that I've done. In this series, we're going to take the website that we finished up in the last episode or last video, and we're going to package it up as capacitor, deploy it on device, and then make sure everything works right. All right. So first step is um, we're going to is well. First step is make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, next is we're going to look at some of the tools we're going to use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Ionic Capacitor. It's a cross-platform native runtime for web apps, open source native runtime for building web native apps, create cross-platform iOS, Android, progressive web apps with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So basically it takes your website, it puts it in a container, and then it through, um, through plugins and APIs, it gives you access to native functionality on device. Now, you can go through this whole installation process and run everything by hand, but I don't recommend that. To quickly get it up and running, there is a VS Code extension, and the VS Code extension can basically just look at your project and add all the stuff it needs to add to make it get packaged up into something to deploy on device. I actually have another video, which I'll add below, that basically shows you taking a basic view application that was initialized um, with Vite and wrapping it in capacitor and deploying it to a phone. So, and the, the way I did that was I used this Ionic Capacitor VS Code extension and that's what I'm gonna use in this app. So let's take a look at that. So I actually have it right here. This is the icon and when you click on it, it takes a look at your application. It makes some recommendations on things to do and kind of the first thing we wanna do is we want to add iOS to this project. And so if you don't, if you haven't done a, a build yet for distribution, then the first thing you want to do is just click the, uh, the build because when you try to add the project, it's going to look for a build directory. So I'm going to click the build first and then I'm going to add iOS to the project. All right, so now the build's completed. And so now what we'll do is we'll add iOS to the project. So add iOS. All right, now iOS has been successfully added to the project. So now what we can do is try to run it on the uh, emulator. And so you do that by just clicking iOS here. It will get a list of all the devices. This device that I've set up already is the 15 Pro Max, so I'll just select that. And then now you can see it's going to uh, package the thing up and deploy it to my iPhone simulator. We'll let that run. Okay, so you can see the application has now been deployed on device. And we are getting a login error load failed. So let's kind of start to debug our way into this. And one of the best things that you can do, which will be helpful, if you're on a Mac like myself, or you're working with an iPhone, you can debug this with uh, Safari. So let's kind of open up Safari. And we're gonna point we're going to open up our developer panel on Safari. And so on develop, and then we're going to connect to the simulator iPro. And now you can click this to refresh it. And it refreshes, and you kind of get some uh, information from the application. So we can first start by trying to sign in at mail.com password. HAPI cannot act, cannot load a local host. So the first problem that you can see is when we were running it as a Vue.js app, it was okay to use local host. Clearly, I cannot access. Oh, oh, actually, first let me make sure I have my. I don't think. Do I have my payload server running? So let's start there. Let's get my payload server running. But the other thing, just to let you know, is we're going to have to change our routes inside of our application to start using a specific IP address. So while we start our server, let's go back to our source code and kind of see what's going on. If you remember from the last video, we kind of tried to isolate things into this auth service. And so if we take a look at our auth service, you can see we got this local host running around everywhere. So that's clearly not what we want. So let's go up here at the top and just like these should probably be in a .env file, but let's just keep them here for now. 
and we'll say API URL and we'll set it to that. So then we can go down here into all these places and replace this and So there we go with our customer, um, that's our sign in. This is our sign up. And we, well, that's just a post. And those are the only two we have here, but the other call that's being made, and we probably want to migrate it, is if we remember, if we go back to our home view, we still have this HTTP request in here, and so we want to move this over to. So let's change this. And that's customer me. And then we're going to move this function into our auth service. So we'll just drop it right up here at the top. Export const get user, and we wanted to return it. We don't want, and so like all these other ones here, we're not handling any errors. We're just going to let them get thrown back to the caller. So let's delete this. Let's delete this here, and we're going to return the user. All right, and then let's go back to our home page. And here it's doing this await get user. We want to import this. So we're going to import that from our auth service now. And so you can see get user got imported from our auth service. And this handle logout, we will, well, let's move this to our auth service. Sign in, sign up. And we're gonna just call this sign out. And we're gonna use our URL, it's customer's logout. Um, once again, we don't want to deal with any of that, so we're going to remove these here. We're also not going to redirect on the router here. We're just going to return. So if we made it all the way here, we're going to return true, indicating that the sign out was successful. And then let's go back to our home page, and we're going to change this handle logout. to await, and then we're going to call sign out. And so this will get our Boolean back there. So we've moved all of our functions over. Let's go back to our, our mobile application. So we'll click back on the Ionic thing. And now that it's all configured and set up, all you need to do is just click the play button and you can see it'll rebuild everything and then deploy back to the device. Oh, and let me fix that error message because it's what it's doing. It's trying to get a user. So that's this get user. And that throws the error message, home page, check current user. This will just throw an error there. Nothing magical will happen. All right. Okay, so now let's see what's going on. Because we're at our home page, we don't have our user. So where is my Safari? I think it's still on this page. So let's open up Safari. Let's connect back to our page. Let's reload, and we're getting cores errors. So the first problem is we need to update our server to accept things from capacitor localhost. So let's copy that. 
Let's go back to our code. Let's go up to our server. And go into collections. No, payload config. See, because it's all local host. So now let's add this capacitor. And let's save that. Go back to our terminal. It's restarted. And let's open up Safari again and reload. All right, so that's much better. So you see it made our API call here and we got no user back. So it took us to our sign in page. So now let's try and sign in. So it signed in because you can see we're getting our auth, auth message, meaning, meaning that our sign in worked. But what's happening is that even though our sign in worked, we're still getting our null on our home page. So let's go back here. So what's happening here is this, this, uh, where are we on our home page on mount? We try to get user. And if we get a user value, if then we stay here, if we don't get a user value, we go back to sign in. So what's happening is like this get user call is failing. And this get user call is failing because it has no idea. There's no authentication. There's no cookie access. So what we need to do is on our header, we need to authenticate using the J the, the uh, It can't make the API call successfully. Well, actually, let me see if I have an error message in here. So this is it making the call, uh, but it's got no cookies. It's got no credentials. It has nothing to kind of get through. And so it's failing. And our user is null because it has no cookie and it doesn't have a token. So it has no way to associate the fact that we've logged in successfully. So what we need to do is we need to use um, the token approach to authentication with payload. And so let's go to put payload CMS. Let's look at, let's look up authentication. Authentication overview, token based auth. So successfully logging in returns a, a JSON web token, which is how we identify themselves in payload by providing a JWT by either a cookie or an auth authorization header. Payload will automatically identify the user and add its JWT data to the express request, which is available throughout payload, including within access control hooks and more. So that's basically what we want to do. And this is the magic code right here. So what we need to do now is well, we need to go back to our code and we'll just start with the get user since that's where we are. And we're going to drop this code here and we're going to get the token. But the question is, where do I get the token from? Well, what happens is after you authenticate down here, where is sign in? After you sign in as part of this response that you get back, you get this user object. And if we go, did I lose it already? I did not lose it. So if you see in the login, I get this back and this is my token. So I'm going to take this token. I'm not going to worry about exp exp the expiration and refreshing or any of that stuff right now. We're just going to save this token and we're going to utilize it on all of our other API calls. Now, capacitor, once again, in its plugins, Let's see, I believe it has something to help us with persistence, with preferences. So preferences API provides a simple key value storage persistent store for lightweight data. So this is what we're gonna use. We're just storing a key. I mean, we're just store, storing a JSON web token. And so we'll use the, uh, the preferences. And as you can see, it tells you why you wanna use the preferences because there's some issues with local storage and storage being cleaned out and all these other things that could potentially happen to you if you just try to stick things in window local storage. So we're going to use capacitor preference. So the first thing we need to do is install this plugin.
Actually, you don't need to install it here. You can follow these instructions and install it here, or what you can do is inside of the Ionic tool under recommendations, configurations, plugins, you can click this and it gives you kind of you can search for plugins. And if I say preferences, it gives us the capacitors preferences plugin and I just click install and it will find the best version and it will install it for me. I'm going to let this thing crank along. Okay, and so now the plugin was installed. And then if you look over here under plugins, it shows you that the plugin was installed. There's a preferences plugin. Now we have this preferences plugin. Let's see how you're supposed to use it. So we're going to import it, and then you just make a um, asynchronous call to kind of set values. And so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this string and we're going to import it into our auth service. So let's go up here. And we're going to import it into our auth service and we're going to save. And then what we're going to do is after our login, we will, where's our sign in? All right, here's our sign in. Down here, we're going to say preferences uh, set the key will be payload wt and then our value will come off of our user and so we're going to say user.token and so that will save the token and this is a asynchronous so let's say await and then what we want to do is up here we're going to say um, token preferences get payload and so that should get our token so now we have the token and it gets passed along so now that we're here let's just kind of wrap it up for all the other ones we don't need it for sign in I don't believe we need it for sign up why well, no we shouldn't need it for sign up um, let's we probably need it for sign out so let's get it. And then where is the user me? Because that was the important one. Post sign in get user so we already have that all right so i think we're all set so kind of let's save this this preferences up here needs to await Uh, redeploy the app so let's, let's make sure there's no local host in here anymore we don't care about the next app we don't care about the payload app found an error so on our sign in page we're still calling this old customer login which we don't want to do uh, this handle login should be calling our new login function and our new login function is called sign in and it takes an email and a password email email dot value password password dot value and then we're going to get the response 
And if an error is thrown, we'll jump down to here. Otherwise, we don't really care what the response is, but we know to go to the home route. So now let's, we're going to have to redeploy again because I made another change. So let's go back to Ionic and redeploy our app again. And you can see what these are the commands you would have to type manually to actually get this to work. So it's doing the attic build, then it's copying over the capacitor stuff, and then it's doing this uh, capacitor run iOS, which is actually calling the Xcode build. Uh, it looks like we need to do some code splitting inside this application. Okay. Now let's try to see if we get better results. A A R O N at mail.com. Password. What is going on? All right, let's see what's happening. Because I must be missing something. Oh, I still don't have it, so let me sign in. Why is it still an object? That doesn't make any sense. So let's go into my auth service and then let's see what's happening on my get token. Oh, I'm gonna do it. It's my bad. It's it doesn't return. I, I thought this worked like a regular preferences. So it has this get result object. So let's see what comes out of that. And so we're going to say value dot token. Let's go back to, let's kind of fix all of these. And let's, I probably should have stuck with the documentation. So let's take a look at the documentation. So you can see on the get, it returns the value and the value is what you want to use. That's my bad for just kind of jumping too fast and trying to get this thing working. So um, let's build this. Okay, so it oh, the reason why it worked correctly this time is because the token had already been saved. I was just retrieving it incorrectly. And so now that I'm retrieving it correctly, eh, so now that I am retrieving it correctly, when the application starts up, inside of the home page where are we inside of the home page and it calls get user get user gets the token that was saved and then it makes the api call and everything works the way it's supposed to be and then when we log out well first let's confirm that it's actually saving the token so if i quit my application and then i launch it again it's working because it's so I know it's saving the token. And if I log out, it takes you back to my sign in page. I restart. Uh, you want to know what? My logout is not removing my token. That's why this worked. So let's go see what's happening in logout. Actually, am I calling sign out? BI customer sign out. And then what we want to do down here is we want to get rid of our token. And so we will set our token. Let's go, where is it? Sign out. And then if everything's successful, right here, I think there's a clear. Yeah, a clear. There's no nothing. Uh, I don't want to clear because I don't want to delete everything. So let's remove. And then remove just has a key.
So we'll wait for the remove, and then if it turns to void, otherwise it'll throw an error. So this will clear out the token, and so we should not be able to refresh. So let's deploy this again with that fix. Make sure it's on the sign out. Okay. Okay, so let's log out now. Now we're logged out. Let's, well, let's close that. Let's open. So you couldn't find it, so we're back here. Let's try, let's try to sign in and log out again to make sure it works properly. All right, so we can't leave our Android friends out. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this thing deployed onto an Android device. So I have my emulator running. I started it up with um, uh, Android Studio. And what we need to do is we follow the same process as before. So we come over here and we click on Add Android Project. We add Android Project. So Android's been added to the project. Oh no, it just added it. I didn't actually build it. So now you go up here and you click the Android button and it will do just like it did on iOS. It's gonna look for a device. Uh, this is my Pixel 3 API 28. There it is, Pixel 3 API 28. So we select the device and it's off to the races. Same kind of thing, it's doing the capacitor run because it already did the build and it's copying everything over. Now it's kind of doing the update Android thing. And this is the part that might take a little bit of time because you can see down here, it's building a native app. Interesting, it is on the home page and it has no user information. Well, let's log out, let's see if we can kind of debug what's going on. Get user error failed to fetch. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of debugging here. So with Edge, you put Edge Inspect, and then that will get you here, and then this is your device that we want to debug, and so we click Inspect. And then now let's uh, refresh and look at our console log. All right, so it's complaining about this HTTPS versus HTTP, and I believe there is a capacitor configuration to address this. So let me go over here and look at my capacitor. Where is it? Configuration. I'm not that familiar with debugging it here, but let's go into our application and capacitor config. And see here, it has Android scheme set to HTTPS. Let's set it to HTTP and see if that addresses our issue. Let's go back to our utility. We will click run, try to run this thing again, have it rebuild and, re and deploy. Okay, let's see if we can log out. Why can't I log out? Let's check our errors again. All right, now we have this clear text not permitted error, which we need to address.
So to resolve the issue, there's an option inside of your survey configuration where you can set clear text to true, along with setting the H this. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to set our Android scheme to HTTP to resolve that HTTPS issue. And then we set clear text to true to resolve the clear text issue. So let's go back, save, try to run this again. You're only doing this in, the, in your debug environment because we're not pointing to an HTTPS. In production, you'd be running on HTTPS, so you would set that to HTTPS, and clear text would not be an issue. Why are we still getting this bizarre error? Well, let's look at Edge again. Who is making local host calls? Oh. It looks like the scheme on um, Android is still HTTP local host, while on Capacitor, I mean, sorry, while on iOS, the scheme is um, capacitor localhost. So we need to go back to, this is the fun of trying to get cross-platform working perfectly. So we need to go back to our application. Let's just go with the approach of updating our server. I'll, I'll do a follow-up on this. Our server can our payload config. Oh, I don't I don't have all right. Let's add localhost here. Okay. So you see the request is coming through, API error, there's no user. So it's throwing an error on the logout because there's no user. Now that's, that's what's kind of funny that's been happening. And since it's throwing that error, it's not gonna get me back to my home page. So let's see what happens if I try to restart things now. So let's close this. Let's restart my app. All right, there we go. So now we're able to successfully make the API calls. So we fixed the cores issue. So let's refresh our home page. Oh, this is the dead one. So let's go back and inspect again. And we let's refresh the sign in page. Well, actually, let's go back to home. And so you can see here, it made the request for the me, and we didn't get any data back. We got a null user returned, and so that's why it redirected. So now we're gonna sign in. And we have our correct data. You can see my login. And we got our user back. And then it made the call to me and I got my correct user back. And now let's try reloading. And it made the call to me, it got the right information. It passed the token that it saved. And so it's persisting it. Let's close the application.
Let's open it up again. It found the user. Let's log out. Log out's working. And we have it running on Android too. So I will definitely post this project because we kind of went through a couple of things to try to get Android running properly. Um, I hopefully, hopefully, sorry, hopefully you found this interesting. And um, please make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment below if there's um, other things related to this you'd like to see. And I will chat with you later. Bye.